Good morning, Grade 12s. Welcome back to Hospitality Studies. My name is Mpume Zulu, and today's lesson is on pastry. By the end of this lesson, you'll be able to demonstrate knowledge and understanding of the different types of pastry, the ingredients and proportions, the factors of making a successful pastry product, the quality characteristics of each one, the different products that you can acquire from the different pastries, as well as the storage conditions. Pastry is a dough of flour, water, short and shortening that can either be savory or sweet, and it is used for many different dishes depending on the type of pastry that you are making. Pastry is high in starch and fat, therefore it falls under the cereals and starch food groups as well as the fats, oils and sweets group. Depending again on the, fill, on the filling or the type of products that you are actually making, you can also have pastries that have nutrients such as proteins, vitamins and minerals. Okay, let's look at the ingredients and functions. You have flour. You can use cake flour or all-purpose flour. The flour has enough gluten to produce a structure. Shortening. Butter is best, but you can also use lard or vegetable oils. They create texture. They are rich in flavor as well as color. Some pastries require the use of eggs. The eggs makes the pastry to be more pliable. It provides color and, and flavor and also helps in, um, in the pastry holding its shape. Sweet pastries also require sugar and the sugar creates a softer crumb and also assists in the color. Liquids such as water or milk develops gluten, it transforms into steam and helps to leaven the dough. Acids such as lemon juice, buttermilk or sour cream, they soften the gluten in the flour and makes it easy to roll out the pastry. Salt adds flavor as well as improves the shelf life. Let us look at our first type of pastry. It is our short crust pastry. In French, they call it the pâté fonce. This is a non-laminated pastry, which means that it does not form any layers. The ratio of flour to fat is one to a half. So if you are using 200 grams of flour, you will use 100 grams of fat. The liquids are one is to one quarter. The different types again of the short crust pastry, you've got your pâté brassé, which is your rich short crust pastry, where the use of eggs is used to bind the ingredients together. Then your sweet short crust pastry, your pâté souhré, this dough is enriched with eggs as well as egg yolks, and it is used for your sweet tarts. Now, after this um, short crust pastry um, session, we are going to look at a video of the method of making this pastry. So after you watch that video, which is complimentsofbaking.com, um, you will then understand that after baking, this are the quality characteristics that you would want to achieve. You want a soft, short crumb. You want it to be golden brown. You don't want it. It must not be flaky. It will be crisp. It will be rich as well as the texture will not be gummy if you've made it correctly. Short crust pastry can be used in a number of dishes. Your savory dishes, for example, are your quiche, pie, tarts, cornish pasties and baguettes. And your sweet um, uh, pastries will be your custard and chocolate pies, your fruit tartlets, your, fl your flans, your head zogies, your lemon meringue tarts. Now, boys and girls, uh, just watch carefully at the video that is going to play next, um, where the chef will show you the different method of making the pastry. Hello, and welcome to the BakingMad.com kitchen. I'm going to show you how to make light, crumbly, short, short crust pastry. 
To make shortcrust pastry, you need plain flour. So I've got 200 grams of plain flour, and I've added a pinch of salt. And I'm just going to sieve that into the bowl. We want our pastry to be really light and fluffy, so it's always a good idea to sieve it. And you always use plain flour for pastry because we don't want it to rise, we just want nice short pastry. And then to add to that, I'm going to add um, half quantity, which is 200 grams of flour, 100 grams of chilled butter, and just rub that in with your fingertips to make breadcrumbs. Now classic short crust pastry is, you can use half butter and half lard if you want to, that's the classic short crust, and I would use that if I was making a savoury pie or a savoury um, pastry. For desserts, I like to use all butter, and if you want a really rich texture, you can add an egg yolk or even a whole egg and if you do that of course you use a little less water and you can also add a little bit of um, say a tablespoonful or so of caster sugar if you want a sweet pastry. Now the trick is you need cold hands and cold butter and you literally pick up the cubes of butter and squish it between your fingertips to rub the butter into the flour. Until you need to keep going like this until you get really fine breadcrumbs. And if you're in a rush or if it's a hot day, just do it in the food processor and that makes it really, really quick. And you shouldn't use the palm of your hands, you should just be using your fingertips. Then you need to add about three to four tablespoonfuls of really cold water. To add three to start with, and that should bring it all together. You can either mix it with your hands or with a knife if you prefer. I just think hands are better because you get a much better feel for what's going on. That should just bring the pastry together into a ball. And we'll add one more tablespoonful. You can never quite tell with flour how much water it's going to absorb. And if you're making wholemeal pastry, it will always absorb a little bit more. So just bring that together into a ball and then ideally if you've got time you should chill your pastry wrap it in cling film and chill it in the fridge for 20 minutes if you've got time so i'm just going to wrap this in cling film and pop it in the fridge for 20 minutes there we are that's our pastry made Okay, welcome back. I hope you have now seen there's many steps that the lady has taken um, in, the, in the making of the pastry. We will discuss the techniques that she's applied to it um, later on onto our lesson, um, where you will now understand where it all comes in. But it was just so you can see the method and you will be able to differentiate between the other pastries as well. Our next pastry is puff pastry also known as a pâté filet. It is a laminated pastry, which means that it has thin layers. It takes a very long time to make puff pastry and it is quite a lengthy process. When you make puff pastry, you have to have what you call first a bourrage, which is your butter block. That butter block is incorporated into rolled out dough. So they make a de trompe first. A de, a de trompe is a flour, water, and a small amount of butter that they make into a dough that is now chilled. And then in between, they will add the barrage, which is your block of butter. And then the pastry goes to a process of rolling and folding many times. And in between those stages, you have to chill the pastry to avoid the butter from melting. Um, you've got your different types as well of puff pastry. You've got your rough puff pastry, which rises less and it is also quicker to make, unlike the traditional um, puff pastry. Um, it also has a lower proportion of fat is to flour. You will more or less grate the fat into the flour. You will not make a barrage when you are making your rough puff pastry. 
Your flaky puff pastry has got also a few layers. It also has a lower proportion of fats and flour, and the butter is not added as in, in one piece. You would make it into small cubes, um, unlike your traditional one as well. Your ratio to flour to fat is one is to one. So it is, you can see that that's why they call it a rich pastry. It's because you add the same amount of flour that you would your butter. Your liquids will be one is to half. Um, you will not put eggs in making puff pastry and you will not have sugar as well as an ingredient. Straight after the slide as well, boys and girls. We will be viewing a video on making the puff pastry. Um, there you will also go through the different terms that I've just mentioned, your barrage and your detrempe, your rolling and your folding, as well as your um, your chilling um, in between the stages. But essentially, you want these quality characteristics to come out of your puff pastry. It is the lightest of all pastry. It has got flaky layers. It has, it will have a light golden brown color after you finish uh, baking it. It will have an uneven surface. It will be rich, but also a very delicate uh, buttery taste and it will not be oily. The products that you can um, make from puff pastry, your savory products will be your bouchets, your volivants, your beef wellington, your fleurons, your sausage rolls, your sweet uh, pastries will be your jam tartlets, your custard slices, your palmiers, cream horns, millet filet, tart tartans, and turnover. Don't be um, stressed now. Don't worry. We will discuss these um, dishes in detail um, later on into the lesson. And after you've viewed the, the video as well, you'll have a much better understanding and you can start even comparing the method of preparation of the shoe of the short crust pastry that we've just um, learned about in our previous slide and how does it compare to our puff pastry enjoy the video it is also courtesy um, of dear son and we will carry on after it
Okay. I hope you also enjoyed that video uh, and you've seen if you compare it to your short crust pastry, what a lengthy process it is to make um, puff pastry. But to, cre to, to, to be able to achieve all those layers, you have to go through that long process of rolling and folding and, and, and chilling at each stage so that the butter does not melt. Okay, let us look at our last um, type of pastry, which is our phyllo pastry. And it is also sometimes called strudel pastry. And you can also have a uh, per pastry coming out of this category. Filo pastry is paper thin and it is sold frozen. Um, it is non-laminated, so it does not have any layers, unlike your puff pastry. It is made out of flour, water, eggs and oil. Now, because it is a frozen pastry, um, you cannot use it in its frozen state. It has to be defrosted. So you will take it out of your um, freezer and place it into your refrigerator. And it is important that you cover it with plastic as well as damp um, towels to avoid it from drying out. Because if it does dry out, you will not be able to use it um properly because it will start to break and you will not be able to roll out if you are rolling out um for example if you're making something it needs to be rolled out because it has dried out so what essentially happens with a filo pastry is that you've got your different sheets and you rub melted butter in between the different layers and you form layers from those sheets and from that rubbing of the butter in between and you would have seen you might have made phyllo pastry uh, products in your classroom where you've made phyllo baskets where you see that you you will you will melt your butter and you will brush your butter in between the layers to form that product that you are creating. The ratio of flour to fat is one is to two. Then you've got your pear pastry. Uh, again, because it falls under this group of phyllo pastry, it is also non-laminated. But it is not as thin as a phyllo pastry. It is made from flour, oil, and water. But because it's also a frozen pastry, just like phyllo, you cover it with a damp towel after defrosting. Now, I want to show you the different dishes or the different products that come out from phyllo pastry and pear pastry so that you can have a, a, a much more bigger understanding. Um, the quality characteristics, it is golden brown in color. It has got a light texture. It is paper thin. It is crisp because you've put all those layers of butter and also most of the time, like your pear pastry, you would deep fry it so it'll becoming, it'll become very crispy. Even your filo when you're making a product, for example, your filo basket and you've got all those layers of butter in between or your baklava, you would actually, when you bite into it, it is, it is, it is crisp and it is quite brittle versus, um, your, um, flaky pastry or puff pastry or your um, soft crumb pastry which is your short crust pastry you can get spanakopitas you can get samosas um you can get spring rolls from your pear pastry your spanakopita you would um get from your phyllo pastry and then your sweet products is your apple strudels your baklava and your um greek milk tarts okay don't worry we'll unpack some of these dishes so that it can easily assist you in understanding and in seeing the different categories. Okay, boys and girls, now I'm, I'll, I've put the slide so that you can basically see what we mean when we speak about the different end products or the quality characteristics of each pastry, where we say that the short crust pastry will have a, a soft crumb it will be crumbly you can see that it's non-laminated there are no layers okay in the short crust pastry versus the puff pastry you, know, you can see thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of layers and these layers have been created as you saw in the video by the process of rolling and folding and also having that butter in between and you rolling and you are rolling in, it into your into your door that creates all the different layers and your filo pastry non-laminated as well but these layers have been formed by yourself by applying butter in between the layers to make up to build up um, um the layers so i thought it's very important for you just to get a broader understanding on what we mean by laminated non-laminated flaky and non-flaky and 
crumbly and brittle, etc. Okay, there are general rules that you are important for you to apply when you are preparing pastry. The first and most important one is that you need to measure your ingredients correctly. And, and that's why we mentioned the different ratios of flour into fat. Because if you do not measure your ingredients correctly, it will change the characteristics of the pastry. Okay, you need to keep everything as cold. Your work surfaces need to be cold. Your ingredients, that's why you may you use ice cold water. You place the water in the fridge. You, you take out your, your butter from the freezer. It, everything must be as cold. Um, even the knife when you are cutting in into your short crust pastry needs to be as cold as well as your hands. And you've seen this in your short crust pastry video where the lady was explaining that you do not use the palm of your hand because that is the warmest part um, of, of your hands. So you use your fingertips when you are rubbing in the, the flour and the butter so that it does not melt the, um, the butter. And the reason why it is important for you to keep everything ice cold is that the butter remains hard and it is able to form layers in between the pastry layers. It also assists in the rising because the warm butter um, will not will make sure that there is no flakiness in the in the pastry. You do not handle or over mix the dough. You need to handle it um, very lightly um, because again the, the heat from your hands can melt the shortening. Overhandling can cause the dough to shrink and then the crust may also be tough. So you need to handle it as lightly as possible. And when you are rolling up, you need to use as little flour as possible because putting too much flour will change the ratio of your pastry. And I'm sure you saw in the other video where the lady was brushing out. She was brushing away the flour that she used on the surface because you do not want a dough that is dry and hard. You need to incorporate as much air as possible by folding the dough correctly. Um, because having a lot of air will give you a nasa, um, the better end product, which will be light and you'll be able to, um, create all those, um, beautiful effects to the end, uh, product. You need to roll out your pastry lightly as well as in the same direction. You must not put too much pressure because then you'll have an uneven thickness. It is important that you do not stretch the dough. So you have this idea that if I stretch it, it's going to fit into my tartan. That will not be good because if you stretch it out and the moment it goes into the oven, it's going to um, basically shrink back. And then you're going to have an undesirable um, end product. So you roll it in the same direction. Um, so and then you make sure that you've got enough to cover your tartan without any stretching. Resting and chilling the pastry after each process of rolling and folding, it is very important because it also uh, prevents the dough from shrinking during baking. You need to bake it at the correct temperature, okay, because if you place it in an oven that has not been preheated or the oven temperature is too low, the end result will be a soft doughy crust and then you have your fat oozing out because the butter will immediately start melting and then it's not going to be um, very good for you. Um, as well as if you put your temperature too high, you, have, you run a risk of burning the crust. Okay, let us look at the different techniques. You saw in short crust pastry, the first technique that was applied to the pastry was rubbing in. And the rubbing in is when you use your fingertips to rub butter lightly into the flour. The mixture is lifted out of the bowl and it is let to fall back through the fingers and you proceed doing that until the mixture resembles soft bread crumbs. Cutting in. Also an important technique when you're making short crust pastry, the butter is cut into the flour using a dough cutter or you can use um, two knives. Crisscross movements are used until the lumps of butter have now disper uh, dispersed evenly into um, the flour. Pastry is also rolled out. 
The dough is chilled for 30 minutes before rolling. Some people chill it for an hour, um, um, but it has to be chilled before you start rolling. Little flour is sprinkled on the surface to prevent the dough from sticking onto your surface. And you need to roll in the same direction likely. You will move your pastry into a 90 degrees and roll out and keep on moving it. But you do not um, roll in different um, in different directions because that will definitely give you an uneven um, pastry uh, in the end. Folding. Especially, um, this is for when you are making your puff pastry. You fold the top third of the dough over the center. Then you fold the bottom over to make layers of the dough. Now, it is important because this process means that you are sealing the air inside the layers um, because you are pressing the edges of the dough and you're also pressing them with your rolling pin, but you're pressing them lightly. After the whole process is done, um, whether you're making short crust, um, when you're making short crust, then you would line your, your, your tart dish. Um, and we said that in the general rules that it is important that you do not stretch the dough. So as you can see, if you look at this picture here, that you've got enough dough that must go over the edges. Um, it must overlap on the, t on the tits, on the tart tin or the dish. Okay, so that you do not um, stretch it, otherwise it will uh, retract or um, once you've baked it. Glazing. Glazing is a technique that applies to many other commodities that you've done in grade 12. Um, and this is basically brushing your pastry before baking with an egg white, uh, an, an egg wash mixture where you're beating your egg whites or you can use um, your milk wash as well. This is basically so that your pastry will have a shiny golden look. Okay. With chill crust pastry as well, you have to also adhere to a process called docking. This is when the, the base of the tart, so after you have rolled it out and after you have lined the tin, you have to dock the, the tart dish or the, the dough in the tart um, with a fork where you are pricking um, the, the dough itself. You are allowing any air that was trapped while you were rolling to escape and also it also allows it when you are baking it so that the air does not get trapped inside. Otherwise, then your pastry will rise um, from your dish. Okay. Sealing is another process. As you can see, once you've docked it, you can place it into the oven for a process called sealing. This is when you are making, um, for example, your quiche, where it has got a very watery um, consistency and you need to pre-bake this crust. Okay, to seal it so that when you do add your very watery um ingredient it does not seep through it does not seep through into the bottom of of the pastry otherwise you, you run a risk of having the pastry to be very soggy okay so that you brush the base and the sides um <clears throat> with bits and egg and then you would return it back into the oven for three to four minutes if you are sealing it and then you would add your egg and your um your your cream mixture and then you will then finish off the baking process Shaping. This is cutting the dough into different forms and shapes depending on um, the type of product that you are making. In this instance, this is our puff pastry and you are making Danish um, pastries. So you are shaping them into the desired shapes. Okay. Another process or technique that is very, very important in making pastry is baking blind. Um, you would have gone through this process even in grade 10 as well as grade 11, um, where you are making your pastry and you are either sealing it or you're making, um, for example, an already cooked um, filling. Then you would have to blind bake it. You use the following. You've got your pastry. Okay, that has already been lined into your tart dish. You have your greaseproof paper, which separates your pastry 
from your beans as well. Your beans' um, main function is to weigh down the pastry so that it does not rise up. So you are weighing it down um, so it doesn't rise up. That is very, very important. And this is, like I said to you now before, that you would always blind bake pastries um, where you have your filling that is already being cooked. So it doesn't require any more cooking. Now, the reason for baking blind um, is that besides the fact that you're going to add a filling that has been cooked, it keeps the crust from blistering. So it keeps the crust from blistering and rising and, 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 and having little bubbles on it. Blistering means the bubbles that form um, on the, on the, on the flatter part of the pastry. It ensures that the pastry case is cooked thoroughly. It helps the crust to become crisp. Now, how do you bake blind? You line your tart tin with your pastry and then you dock it. Remember, docking is when you use a fork and you make holes into it. You line um, the, the tart tin with, or on top of your pastry with foil or greaseproof paper. You then weigh um, the lining and pastry down with your dried beans or your rice. So you can use rice and these can be used again over and over. It doesn't mean that once you've used the beans, then you throw it away. You can always, um, Place them in a in a, in a in a container, um, an airtight proof container or a, a glass bottle, and you can reuse it um, as well in the future. You bake the pastry case in an oven at 180 degrees for 10 to 15 minutes. You will then remove the beans and the and the parchment. We actually call this process boys and girls cartouche. Okay, when you place the greaseproof paper and your beans, it's called a cartouche. You will then remove the cartouche out and then take back the pastry back into the oven because now you're not going to have it. It's not going to blister anymore because you've weighed it down in the first 10 to 15 minutes. And then you'll take it back into the oven until the, bake, um, the pastry is dry and it has lightly browned. Okay, yeah, let's look at the different products from short crust pastry. It is your baguette. These are small oval or boat shaped pastry cases that are blind baked. Um, you can have your sweet or your savory fillings um, in them. Um, what is important here, boys and girls, as we start with the uses, is that pastry can be integrated with your uh, cocktail functions. It can also be integrated with your desserts. So you'll find that the fillings or the type of pastries, you can also include them um, in your um, other sections, where, for example, if it is your cocktail functions and they ask you, uh, give three examples of sweet or of savory um, cocktail, cocktail snacks, you can have baguettes as one of them amongst the others that we'll discuss as well. Your hedzogis, these are jam-filled tartlets or cookies with the coconut topping. It is it's served um, in a cup-like pastry base. Okay, some of you have made these in your pastry, in your, in your practical lesson. Okay, so you can see inside. So you've got the pastry, your short crust pastry. Then you've got your jam that is inside. And then you have your coconut topping at the top. Okay, your quiche. Very famous quiche. is custard made with milk and eggs that is poured into the pie crust that has been baked. Um, but importantly, it has been sealed first. And then you add your custard um, and then you, you, you bake it off in the oven so that it is nicely cooked. Your, mel your lemon meringue pie. Okay, another commodity that you've probably um, done in your practical lesson. It is a baked pie that is made out of uh, out of our short crust pastry. It has got a lemon custard filling. Okay, you can see the lemon custard here, and it is topped with a fluffy meringue topping. Remember, we did desserts in the first term, and a meringue is your stiffly beaten egg whites that have got um, sugar onto it, um, and you've got your different types of um, meringues. We will unpack them in our sessions following this one. Okay, the different products that can that you can have from puff pastry, your volovans. These are 10 centimeters in diameter, 
They have a savory filling and the filling must be thick. Okay. So now we've moved. You can see that the difference as well. Um, when you, when you, when we've just looked at the different types of short crust pastry and now we're going into puff pastry, you will see a very difference as well in the quality characteristics. Okay. So they are 10 centimeters in diameter and, um, the bouchers and the volubans are basically the same thing. The main difference is the size okay you like i said it is the volivants are 10 centimeters in diameter the bouchers will be five to six centimeters in diameter and again if in a question you've been posed um with these two uh products and you were asked which one is more suitable for a cocktail snack you would choose the bouchers because the bouchers are smaller they bite size you can have your sweets and your savory fillings as well and just like the volivants they must have um, a thick um, filling okay your cream horns this is a pastry that is cut into strips and then it is wrapped around a metal cornet mold um, to make it into a, a, a horn. And then once you bake that, and once you've baked, you've baked that, you will then fill it up with your chintilly cream. Um, and again, your chintilly cream, which is cut in shoe pastry, it is also part of your dessert. This is your sweetened cream that has been sweetened with your um, with your icing sugar. Your Malay fillets. Or your rectangular um, puff pastry, um, you cut it into rectangles and then you layer up the uh, the rectangles. And in between the rectangles is your cream or your jam. And you can sometimes have your creme patissiere, another term that we discussed last time. And our creme patissiere, we said, is our custard. It has to be the custard that has been um, that is thickened with the um, cornstarch so it is your creme patissiere you will not put your creme anglaise because your creme anglaise is quite watery you will put your creme patissiere your fleurons okay these are crescent shapes so you take your pastry you you cut it into a crescent shape um and it is used for garnishing palmiers okay very famous amongst every household these are multi-layered pastry and um, that is shaped into a palm leaf you sprinkle them with sugar so you have your, your 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 big layer of pastry you will sprinkle it with sugar and then you would roll it up and then cut it and once you've cut it it comes out like a palm leaf and it can sometimes be called pig's ears or elephant's ears Your savory puff pastry will be your beef wellington. Okay, this can be integrated with your meat um, section. This is the fillet that has been coated with a pate. You can see the pate here. So you would coat the fillet with the pate and then you would wrap your puff pastry around it and then you'll bake it into the oven. Tart tartan. It is an upside down apple tart. Okay, you can use other fruits as well that consist of the pastry being baked over your fruit. Um, and arranged in, with, in caramelized sugar and it is served upside down. So what you would actually do is you will place your apples, for example, and you add your, your sugar and you caramelize your sugar and your butter. And once it reaches the caramelization stage, you will take a lid, you'll make a lid of your puff pastry. You'll place that at the top and then you will dock it just so that when it starts bubbling in the oven, that the air does get doesn't get trapped inside and you once you've taken out of an oven you will turn it upside down and that is how you'll serve it that's why you have your fruits at the top and your pastry at the bottom because you've tipped it over your sausage rolls or your pieces of meat that has been wrapped in in pastry another common commodity in um in in your household Your phyllo pastry uh, products, okay, your pearl, from your pearl you have your samosas, okay, these are fried, okay, they can also be baked, nowadays people bake it for health reasons, and you can have your savory fillings, you can also have your sweet fillings, but it must be quite thick so that it does not ooze out of the, of the pastry. 
from your um, strudel pastries or your um, filo pastry, you have your apple strudel, okay, product that is basically has your apple filling inside. And then you have your baklava, which is your layers of filo pastry that um, then in between you put your chopped nuts, you put your uh, very thick syrup um, as a frosting, or you can also use honey. It is very, very sweet. Then you've got your spanakopita. This is a filo pastry that has been stuffed with your spinach as well as your cheese. Now, what is important about these different juices or the different products, boys and girls, is that you need to basically, even though you have not made them in a practical lesson, but you need to be able to look at them clearly on a picture, should the picture be posed in a question. And you need to look at the layers. You need to look at the filling. Then you would be able to determine whether it is a puff or a short crust, or is it a purr, or is it a phyllo. Okay. Certain problems can occur. And um, when you're making these types of pastries and the reasons why we'll discuss now, you can sometimes have a very hard crust. That is because you've used too much water. Remember, we said that the correct measurement of ingredients is very important. The pastry might be too soft. That means you've used too much butter or the butter's actually melted. Maybe your oven temperature was too low and the, and, and, and the fat has melted in between. The pastry was soggy, you've used too much water, your oven was maybe too cold, you maybe did not preheat the oven, or else you have not baked the pastry long enough. You can sometimes have your short crust pastry shrinking. It means that you've overhandled it, or you have, you, you've over rolled it, you have not given it resting time in the fridge, or else you have stretched it during um, your rolling and your folding process. With your puff pastry, you can sometimes have a hard pastry. That is when you add too much water or too much flour during rolling. That's why, like I showed you in the video, they were brushing off the, the flour as they were rolling. Um, or else you've overhandled it. The fat oozes out during baking. Maybe the fat was too soft. The dough could be too soft. You maybe did not seal the edges and now all of that has happened or sometimes the oven was too cold, or there was uneven rolling and folding. The pastry is not flaky, the fat was too warm, or you used your heavy pin too heavily. Remember we said that you need to use your rolling pin very lightly. The pastry is also shrunken, you've overhandled it, you have not given it enough time between rolling and folding, and also you've overstretched it. The pastry did not rise evenly. That means that there's been an uneven distribution of fat. There's uneven rolling and folding. And then the oven was not closed properly and cold air was able to get in, into it. Okay. Let's look at the different fillings that you can have or you can put into your uh, pastries, especially your short crust pastry. You can have your sweet fillings. Um, and for example, you use your fruits, your mousse, your creme patissier, or your, your, your creme chin, your, your creme chin silly. Um, this will be also suitable for your puff pastries because you would make the cases and then you would now add it as a, as this is a filling. Um, your vegetables, you can use pre-cooked spinach and mushrooms. It's important that you must not have it raw. You must pre-cook it. Um, your meat, you can use steak and kidney, especially if you're making steak and kidney pies or your venison pies. You can use some pork. You can use mince, um, quite a large um, um, or variety of meat that you can actually use. You can use, if you are making your quiche or your milk tart, sorry, a spelling error there, um, you can use your eggs and then your fish and your shellfish um, if you need to use that for either your short crust or your um, puff pastry, even with your uh, filo pastry as well. You finish off by the, the pastry by moistening additional dough. 
Um, so you would want to decorate it. Let's say you are making a pie, and you you obviously a pie has got the crust, it has got the filling inside, and then it's got the lid. Okay, and you now want to decorate and finish off the, 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 the product. So you want to decorate it. Your decoration will not be able to stick unless you play, you put some egg whites or water. Um, so you can make it into different, uh, different shapes as well. Some people like to make leaves and some people like it. It, it all depends on your, um, preferences and then some pies like your jam pies or your fruit pies needs to have a lattice or pie cover and it mustn't it, you won't close it up like you would in a pie you would now use a lattice which is a pattern for an open plan as you can see you take different strips of pastries and you just um lay them into different directions all right, and then you've got your fluorons. We've discussed our fluorons in the uses. We said that they, they are crescent shaped, and you use them for your garnish. Okay. Now, boys and girls, let us look at the storage conditions um, of pastry. If it is uncooked, you can freeze it and keep it in the freezer for three months. It is important that you need to wrap it up well so that it does not suffer from freezer burn. Freezer burn, a term that we discussed in meat. And should you need to use it, you need to remove it from the freezer. You need to place it into your baking sheet and then leave it in the fridge, in the fridge, um, to defrost overnight or to thaw overnight. And then if you've just placed it in the fridge, it's also fine. That can keep, um, still perfect, uh, for a few days. Um, you need to definitely wrap it up in cling wrap again because you do not want it to dry out. In the event that you've baked the pastry, but you have not filled it, it can stay in an airtight container for two weeks. And if you've baked it as well as filled it, it can only last in the fridge for a few days. Now, boys and girls, that is the end of our um, lesson. And now we're going to look at the activities. And you can now see the type of questions that you can find relating to this section okay let's look at the first one they've given you two products pastry products and they've given you the names of the products okay this might be the case all the time it might not also be the case all the time um so don't take it for granted that in this instance they've given you the names so it now gives you leverage to now be able to uh, identify and understand what pastry it is so the first question says, identify the type of pastry that is used in dishes A and B. So what pastry has been used in the Malay Foulet and which pastry is used in Spanakopita? Um, and I said to you before, you need to look at the characteristics of each one for you to be able to answer correctly. And the first one is your puff pastry. You can see the thousands of layers that have been formed due to the rolling and folding. And then... This is a filo pastry. You can see that these layers have been created from the paper thin pastry by rubbing in the butter um, in between. Okay, next question. Explain the purpose of using ice water when you are preparing pastry A. Now, this is quite interesting for me to highlight to you that if you did not get 1.1.1 right, then it's going to be a bit difficult for you to get 1.1.2 but because they've given you again now a key word which is ice water it must take you back to the general rules of making the pastry where i said to you that everything needs to be ice cold so you can be general in this as well and the benefits of using ice water is that it will change into steam and act as a raising agent um, and it also helps the pastry to form the different layers. Okay. The next question. Give two reasons why fat may ooze out during um, the baking of pastry A. And then the answers will be the oven was too cold, the fat was too soft, the dough was too soft, the edges were not sealed um, properly, and then it was uneven rolling and folding. Can you see how our lesson is actually coming together with these questions? 
okay? Motivate why all apparatus, so apparatus is another name for equipment, must be cold when preparing pastry A. Okay? Now, you would respond by saying, if everything is as cold or everything is cold, the shortening or the butter will remain hard. It will allow the pastry to form the layers. It aids in the better rising of the pastry. And then you also mentioned that if the butter is warm, um, it will be absorbed by the flour and it will not um, produce a flaky pastry. Okay. Now, again, they're giving you a hint. It says, describe two precautionary measures when thawing pastry B. Already that gives you a hint. It's okay. Thawing out, remember, our filo pastry and our per pastry are, are, are frozen. Okay. You leave it in the refrigerator for 12 hours or you leave it overnight. You must remove it from the fridge one hour before using it. Okay. And then you must always keep the pastry covered to prevent it from drying out. And remember, we cover it using a damp towel. So you'll make your uh, your dishcloth, a clean dishcloth, a bit wet, and you'll cover it just to provide that moisture and um, prevent it from drying out. Name and describe a, techniques, a technique that should be applied to the pastry before it is baked to give the pastry a shiny golden brown appearance. You must identify, so give the name, and you must now describe the technique. Then what technique? What needs to be applied to the pastry before it is baked? Okay, right? To give it a shiny appearance, that is now your key word. So your technique is glazing. So now you must explain what is glazing. It is brushing of the pastry with your egg wash or your milk. Then state three ways in which the shrinking of the pastry can be prevented during the preparation process. How can you prevent shrinking? Three ways. So you would say you, by not stretching the pastry, by making sure that the pastry is rested and chilled after each stage of making and assembling, and by not over handling the pastry. Okay. Distinguish between per pastry and short crust pastry used to prepare the snacks with regards to the following aspects. Now, this again is a, is a, is a, is a nice example of how uh, pastries can be integrated with your um, cocktail snacks. So you must give the differences between your per and your short crust um, and give an example of a product. If you look at the mark allocation, you must have two differences of per pastry and two differences of short crust and then the examples. Now, you will not in this instance give them um, common um, things about each pastry. You must give the differences. Now, this makes it a bit, a, a bit of a, a middle to higher order question. Okay. So let us look at the response that you would need to put down. Small amount of oil. And if you, and then you would now put on the, on the, on the, on, um, on the opposite side on the short crust, you will then use fat and shortening, right? And then another difference per pastry has got the ratio of flour to fat, almost no fat. And then your short crust pastry is your, is two is to one or one is to half, depending on which textbook you are using. And then per pastry has got no eggs and then um, and then short crust pastry may contain eggs and then per pastry does not crumble, um, does not crumble and then short crust pastry may crumble. Per pastry is not as rich and then short crust pastry is rich. Um, per pastry has got a darker golden brown color and then short crust has got your lighter golden brown, brown color. Um, your per pastry is pliable or flexible um, and this short crust pastry is thick. And then your per pastry is fried, and then your um, short crust is baked. Can you see now how you make the differences? So this is a very, very um, different question. Also quite difficult um, because you're not giving them what makes them both the same, but what separates them from each other. 
and it's always easy if you write the one thing for the one and you do the opposite for the other one instead of just singing singing them out an example of a pastry product for each one um, it is samosas for per pastry and then it is your quiche for your short crust and just to highlight as well that if you had put here your um Filo chocolates, your spanakopitas, your apple strudel, it will be wrong because you've been asked per itself. Okay. Let's look at the next one. Study the extract below and answer the questions that follow. So you've got your pastry ingredients, your oil, butter, eggs, sugar, flour, and milk. And then they tell you the ingredients above are incorrect. You need to select three correct ingredients used in making rich short crust pastry and arrange them in the correct order. So the highlights here that you need to highlight is your rich short crust or short crust. Then you would look at your ingredients and then you must now take out three correct ingredients. Once you sourced out the three, you need to put them in the correct order. Because again, this question is integrating with your preservatives where we looked at labeling. And one of the um, elements of labeling is that on a label, the ingredients are placed according to the order um, that uh, of the, or the amount that they, they, they've been placed. So the first ingredient will be the most predominant or the most dominant um, that you'll find into the um, product that you would have in your hand at the moment. So that's why we need to have you putting it into the correct uh, order so that we can see that this is actually a pastry. Okay, so you have your flour, butter, eggs, and milk. Now, you did not use oil because the, you use oil when you're making your purr. You did not choose your sugar because they've told you it's a rich short crust. If they said a sweet short crust, you would then put sugar. And then, yeah, that was that. And then you place them according to the correct order. Your flour is the most dominant one. It's got the highest. Remember, we have one is to um, half and then your butter is the next important one, then your eggs, and then your milk. Okay, the crust of one of the products on the platter, this is your cocktail snacks, again, we are integrating with cocktail snacks, is baked blind. Identify the product which is baked blind. So it will be a quiche, okay, because that was in the examples there. And then the next question says, explain why the crust of the quiche or the crust that should be identified in A is baked blind. So why do you bake blind? It ensures that the pastry case is thoroughly cooked. It, is, it helps the crust to become crisp and prevents it from being soggy. It also keeps the, the crust from blistering. That is the end of our lesson. Thank you so much, um, boys and girls. I hope you have learned quite a bit. And remember, the worksheets will be loaded for you on the EC curriculum website for you to be able to um, continue with your work at home. Um, and then the answers are also placed there 